You've tuned into the Bellingham Podcast for the week of January 20, 2019. This is episode 107. From that slightly damp city by the Salish Sea, I am AJ Barce. And straight out of 9226, I am Chris Powell. On this episode, when a moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. But in my case, it's some gastro huga with umlauts. When the listener questions make you drool just like a pasta fazool, that's amore. When you dance down the street with a cloud at your feet, you're in love, especially when you're celebrating an anniversary. What the heck is Chris talking about this time? This is the Bellingham Podcast. I'm pretty sure the latter part wasn't in Dean Martin's original, but hey, how you doing, Chris? I am just a happy camper today, AJ. How about yourself? Good, good. We're recording uh, like a day and a half early. Indeed, yes. Uh, you know, logistics occur, and hey, let's you know pump out an episode because the uh, opportunity presents itself. Yeah. So, what's this episode about? Uh, experiences, and uh, we got a little bit of listener uh, questions, listener uh, submissions, mail, from, submissions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we tried something different for this show, and I apologize to everybody because Chris and I literally just thought this up on the fly. Uh, if you follow my, uh, if you follow myself on Instagram at AJ Barce, and also you can follow Chris on Instagram at M N M L T E K. I'm so minimal. I don't like vowels that much. And uh, every so often for the shows, what we're going to do is instead of asking for listener voicemail or inconveniencing people, here's what we're going to do. Every so often, if you follow either Chris or myself for the show, the week of the show, we may put up a poll where it just simply says, "Hey, we're taking listener uh, comments and questions. Hit us up." Just be nice about it. Yes. Which all of you were, which thank you so much. And so we've got some shout outs later in the show and we are going to answer questions direct from Instagram. Exactly. But first. But first. We're talking about experiences. Yes. Not quite the Jimi Hendrix experience. I know. You had to explain that one to me. Yes. Are you experienced, AJ? Well, I am. Anyway. <laughs> so you had a, you and your wife. Yes. Had a wonderful anniversary. What year does it mark? Uh, number nine. Number for nine. For my beautiful wife and myself. Uh, we celebrated this, this week and uh, got a little bit of a getaway coming up in the near future. But we had an opportunity to have an evening out on the town. Ooh, what'd you do? And uh, met for appetizers at a beautiful uh, outlook in which got a nice view of the sunset as it occurred right around the five o'clock hour since we're in the northern hemisphere during winter. All right, and also I, I took her to get a little bit of pampering, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, in a spa type thing uh, to get her feeling pretty, um, even though she already is. And then we had dinner. And this experience, I'm like, after, when I got done with our dinner, AJ, dear friend, I immediately texted you as I'm walking out of the, the restaurant saying, I must talk about this experience <laughs> in 107, this episode. Which is very rare, folks. Chris does not text while being on an experience, unless it's a bad experience. That's why I was concerned. Yeah. But this was not the case. So my wife and I went to Oven, OVN, with the umlauts. They, they're so minimal, they only got one vowel in their name, too. <laughs> Which, full disclosure, this is an honest review, not paid or endorsed. Right. Yeah. No, no they're not throwing us any cash or anything. They threw me some, some pizza dough, and I loved it. <laughs> but anyway, that's beside the point. So... We went to OVN Oven, and from here on out, I'm going to call it Oven. Oven. Uh, it's in Fairhaven, across the street from Village Books and the Fairhaven, Fairhaven Village Green, right at the end of one half of the Taylor Dock Walk. So we sat down, and they happen to have a table by the window uh, towards the front, which is awesome because it's a darkened evening. Uh, the the wait staff at Oven are top notch, and I don't use superlatives. In how I describe it, so, this is the best egg scramble ever. I don't do that. But what I will say is they are in the top two or three restaurant staff awesomeness mm -hmm. scale in Whatcom County. I was thoroughly impressed with how pleasant, friendly, and not saying the same things over and over again to uh, help us out with our order. And, and getting a couple good pizzas, you may want to order one for yourself because even though it's an 11 inch pizza, you may be hungry if you split it within two. Anyway, as we are enjoying our evening, a quiet evening together, I hear blues music playing the speakers in the restaurant and it is at a comfortable decibel volume. It's where I could have a conversation with my wife and yet in a little bit of a, a pause in the conversation, I'm hearing Stevie Ray Vaughan's version of Little Wing from the Jimi Hendrix experience. Ah, there it is. There it is. So... And the fact that, you know, kudos to Oven for being able to have a soundtrack 
that is pleasant uh, and other blues songs. I really enjoyed that. That appealed to me. And then healthy ingredients in in what they're putting into this uh, pizza pie that uh, they have local partners. They partner up with Carne in Bellingham. They, they that's, part- our, that's our butcher and charcuterie, Are, aren't they? What you said, yes. yes. Uh, they, they, they deal in meats. They're, yes. they're a local thing. Hence the, the name Carne, yes. Yeah. Uh, so Carne in Bellingham, Ferndale Farmstead Cheese Artisans, and Twin Sisters Creamery are providing some of the cheese for the pizza. So, you know, good on you for getting your supplies locally. Awesome experience. Very romantic as far as the lighting that they had mm-hmm. and the whole environment. I felt really taken care of. And when I got done with that, I was just giddy. And, you know, I don't often get giddy. That's usually a five-letter word that I don't really uh, do. But I, I, my wife and I had a really good time. And I wanted to at least give a shout-out for those of you that may be celebrating an anniversary. Yeah. Head over to Oven because you might find yourself having a good experience. If you are hungry, first Monday of every month, all right, 4.30 to 8.30 p.m., first Monday of every month, all-you-can-eat Neapolitan-style pizza. Oh, cool! With the uh, w- with a salad bar included. Wow! And they have a fam- the, the the famous coaster. Green, you leave on your table. I'm hungry. Red, you turn over. I'm not hungry. Fourteen dollars a person. Oh, sweet! And children six and under eat free. Okay, honey, I know where we're going. <laughs> When's the next date for this? <laughs> well, the first Monday, you know, you missed okay, your January so opportunity. February. Yeah, the first Monday in February, y'all. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, 4.30 to 8.30 p.m. You got it. I looked on their website, so this is factually correct. You know, yeah. go, to, go to, we have a link to Oven's uh, website in the show notes. Drink. Drink. Uh, and so you can get more detailed information about that. What an experience. Awesome pizza. Great environment and very... Uh, very Locally cool conscientious. Step. Yes, exactly. So that is my oven experience. Thank Dude, you very much. That's killer. And this is also a smaller venue. Like this is not a. This is a small. Not well. I guess medium ish. It's, it's not, a medium ish. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't. Ha- they have one uh, grand room, if you will, and they have yeah. a little bit of seating for bar. That, you yeah. know, the, if you want to have a drink with your pizza, which who doesn't in some cases, other than the heroes among us that are going through recovery, and I love those people. But they have a good amount of tables. Uh, so you know. It's Fairhaven. Yeah. When the weather gets nicer, uh, people go outside and they want to have something with a beautiful window view. So be forewarned. Totally. That was my experience. AJ, I know you got an experience yeah. uh, recently. Hit it. So uh, my experience took us uh, eastward from Bellingham and we hit Mount Baker. And uh, the reason I wanted to bring this out is because, I mean, many, many folks in the Pacific Northwest are ski bums, snowboard junkies, you know, that really when when opening season hits, like everybody goes out to the mountain, right? I'm not one of those people. Like I like going out to the mountain for hiking or, you know, adventuring or sightseeing type of thing. But I'm not one who straps on planks of wood to my feet (laughs) and allows the concussion of the mountain decimate my patillas and kneecaps. Okay. I like to walk later in my life, so yes. I choose not to. Right. But I wanted to bring this out because uh, one of the cool things that you can do, it's a cheap getaway, it's a fun getaway, and it's family friendly, and that is if you have a wee one and you want to do sledding, go to Mount Baker. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to go to the lodge. What you're going to do is drive up towards Picture Lake. So that's where world-renowned spots take a photo, which is kind of cool. It's in our backyard. You may have taken a couple photos from there as well. There's a few. There's a few. But no, uh, Picture Lake, it's this beautiful lake um, uh, at the, 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 towards the upper lodge. Like if you're heading towards Artist Point, which don't try to go to Artist Point right now, it's not plowed unless you want to hike or snowshoe. You can't get to Artist Point, but you can get to Picture Lake. And if you get there early, the key word is early. Early, folks. Even with a wee one, get up early. Well, wee ones get up early anyway, so you're good to go. Unless you have one like mine that's having growing pains. But there you go. Uh, get up early. Go down to any of the local places to get a simple saucer sled. I'm going to throw out a recommendation. Hardware Sales has them, okay? A Bellingham Original. A Bellingham Original. Matter of fact, they sell a saucer that's made in America, if if that is important to you. I think it was like a whopping $12, $13 maybe. I don't remember. Lots of colors. Have your little kid pick one out. Awesome. Head towards the mountain, and when you get to Picture Lake, what's cool is these lakes are frozen over. Now, I mean frozen over, and like there are footage of snow on top of it. So there's not any like fear of um, like uh, that scene in It's a Wonderful Life where he actually, his brother breaks through the ice and he goes through and he saves his brother but loses hearing in the ear. Yes, I can throw out a pop culture of reference, you can. even though it's dated. Go for it. 
And what's great is all of the hills along uh, along the, the lakeside are perfect for sledding. And what's cool is you can kind of control the speed and pace to which you want your Wii One to go by how far up you go. Oh, yes. So if you're like mine, where they're, they're less than, you know, five years of age and they're not adrenaline junkies, you just have to hike a little bit and then just plunk them down and let them slide down and help them back up and plunk them. It's great. It's great fun. And what I would recommend is if you go up there early enough, because a lot of people, regardless if they listen to our show or not, are going to be up there by noon. So if you get there a little bit before noon, one, you'll find parking because the thing is, is that the, again, the lifts are open. So everybody's trying to park for the lifts. So you're fighting against snowboarders and skiers yeah. as well as a fellow sledders. But yeah, just go up there and enjoy the day by bring a, bring a lunch because that way you don't have to worry about booking it down the mountain because again, it is fairly icy this time of season. And literally, like when we went up there, Chris, last weekend, like it was 50 degrees. I was wearing my, my vest that you see. Okay, 50 like, up on the mountain. Yeah, it was like 49, 50 degrees. How about that? Yeah, sat down underneath a, a, a tree uh, or I should say midsection of a tree because I'm pretty sure there was like eight feet of it underneath us. And we just, you know, had a nice picnic on the snow. You know, even my wife wasn't wearing her six parkas mm. and it was great. And, you know, our son was able to romp around, explore. And then we piled into the truck and he passes out and we go down off the mountain. It was great fun. A nice quiet drive down yeah. the mountain. So here's a pop quiz question that I think you're not prepared for, but I'm okay. going to ask it anyway. I'm ready. Um, for those, you, you have a number of people, I believe, that are on deck with like, this would be a great idea. So we're talking about the, the, uh, Exit 255, Sunset Drive exit in Bellingham, State Route 542. So let's just say you blast past the nightmare that is Sunset Drive uh, stoplights. About approximately how many miles from, uh, you know, Hannigan and Woburn, shall we say, to uh, Picture Lake? So you're looking at probably with the conditions that we have lately, bro, between an hour and hour and a half drive to get up there from Bellingham proper. Because it's not and a 70 mile an hour uh, no. drive up. It's w- twists yes. and turns. And, Which uh, I, will, I will put out a, a traffic advisory because we are in full swing of, of, of winter season. It is required that all vehicles carry chains. It's not required that you have to drive with them, but you have to carry them with you. First, second, don't drive reckless and speed between Bellingham and the mountain. Here's why. State Patrol is out there. I wave to them. Uh, and the fine gentleman in the uh, Subaru also waved to him as he was receiving the The all-wheel tickets. drive Subaru. Yes. yes, exactly. Yes, you are not invincible out there. And it's not about getting up there as fast as you can, folks. It's the mountain. It doesn't care. It's going to be there for you, okay? Take your time and enjoy the ride there. This public service announcement is brought to you by A.J. Barce, photographer extraordinaire. And also this uh, podcast might be tuning in to us on Camry 102.3 FM. Low power. Community radio here in the heart of the snowy city of subdued excitement. And that concludes our experience portion <laughs> of the show. Let's move on to some questions from our uh, people who Dude, chimed in. we need in. a jingle. We need like an Instagrammy jingle. Next episode that we do that, I'll have one for you. <laughs> or, if, or if there's anybody uh, that, that, that listens that wants to make us a jingle for like Instagram like uh, comments. All right. Question number one. Okay. This one probably is more in your wheelhouse, AJ, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, so you last episode you talked about S I H H yes which stands for uh, let me see if I can get this one go for it Salon International de la o- o- Orologie yeah all right fancy yeah. watch uh, convention fancy expensive watch this is this is the uh, this is the F one of 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 watches right this is the formula racing of watches yes so uh, for the watch fam out there AJ what is your favorite watch so far at SIHH 2019 so and this this uh, this comment came in from uh, Instagram user one too many watches and I one too many watches so thanks for chiming watches. in uh, I love I love that that handle by the way yes. <laughs> we all have one too many watches except for you you're minimalist so okay so great question here's the thing so SIHH I don't really like nitty gritty follow because it is it's the F1 of of watchmaking where you have one onlys you've got concepts and you have tongue in cheek concepts which there's one that we'll talk about in a second um, but these companies are re- this is not um, like Basel World where it's the trade show type of thing this is high or ho Oro Lager. It's just, it is the, the top end. And 
out of it, we see concepts and stuff. But one thing that finally came out of concept and is going into production that I'm really thrilled about is the Resonance Type 2 eCrown. Now, Resonance is an interesting company because they make a watch that's disc-based. The interface is very different than um, the hands that you typically see on a watch. You see the entire face change as time changes. Really? Yeah, so you have a disc for minutes, a disc for seconds. Oh. I've showed you this one before. It looks like a gauge cluster out of like the year 2100 in in a vehicle. It's a Blade Runner watch. It's very much a Blade Runner watch. But this is the one that has um, little solar panels that will open up because it's mechanical and it is electromechanical at the same time. Wow. So it does have, I don't, it's not a quartz watch. It is truly a mechanical watch. But um, I believe Tony Fidel kind of put it really great in an interview I saw him trying to describe the, the e-crown as a concept. It's imagine if you took the connected features that we would want in a watch and and the watch winder itself and put it in the watch. So, for instance, you change, um, you change time zones. You're a jet setter, right? You land in Munich. The watch will sync to Munich time when you get there because it can get a signal from your phone. And as your phone changes, it does too. That's tasty. Uh, you can save like three different time zones or you can disable it altogether because it is a mechanical watch. It also has cool features like um, if, uh, if you're not wearing it, it will stop itself uh if you if you enable this feature keeping the power reserve available for you so that when you wake up it will you can like double tap the sapphire crystal it will set the time perfectly and then continue running as it is an automatic watch. What a nice lift from those uh, laptop PCs that you close the lid and it goes to sleep. That's yeah. a pretty pretty cool idea to save battery life. Yeah. Or save well, energy. Save energy from because it is being down. powered by yes. a spring. So it's an, it's an interesting concept. Um, and or it's no longer a concept. It's, it's coming out in production. Um, it is a, 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 again, high performance. So it's a high price, price tag. It's going to come out at uh, 42,500 uh, Swiss francs which I think we're just, the USD is just about on parity with it. So give or take yes. a couple of thousand. Um, For someone who has everything. Well, the, again, the, I, look at, I look at this as SIHH like Formula One. I like the concept that this bridges kind of like a couple episodes back. I mentioned the, that, that Indiegogo or Kickstarter uh-huh. uh, sequence, right? This, these are guys that are trying to combine an automatic watch to drive a connected watch. Sure. And... Again, going forward, like horology, um, this, I see this kind of an evolution where this is the best of both worlds. You get connected features, should you want them. You get higher performance out of the actual mechanics itself because the electrics are helping the mechanical horology itself. And you don't you don't have to do anything. It just takes care of it for you. This is something that a lot of people um, complain about with old mechanical watches, right? Uh, if I don't wear it, it, you know, I have to set the time tap tap it's done you mm-hmm. know and you have an essence of again lineage where it's still mechanical so technically and this electric part is a module so theoretically in the future it's serviceable as opposed to quartz where once the circuit's dead it's dead all right so i find it interesting um and that's the type of thing out of SIHH i really tune into i like resonance um the other thing i wanted to throw out there was mbnf which is mac booster and friends i've i've seen interviews with this dude and i i if he ever came to bellingham First pints on us. Of course. Uh, MBNF pa- uh, partnered with um, Le Pe. So they created the Medusa, which is one of their uh, clocks. The, so uh, MBNF is well known for their really killer, futuristic watches. And every uh, so often they uh, partner to create actual desk clocks. In the past, they've done music box clocks and UFOs and I think even a TIE fighter. Wow. They're killer. This one is based off of um, a jellyfish. And if you if you know what they released last year, I think, or two years ago, I can't remember, they did a watch called the um, Aquapod, which looked like a jellyfish on your wrist. This is a bigger version. What I found cool about this design is it's a desk clock, or if you hang it, they also give like Murano glass um, uh, tentacles. I, I don't know what, hmm. what what's underneath a jellyfish. So if you have this clock hanging from the ceiling, you also get the Murano glass. It's an art piece. Okay. And that's the other part of SIHH is it's Formula One meets high art. And every time I see an MBNF, I just I think they epitomize it. So okay. um, out of this, I threw you a question. Yes, sir. Uh, H. Mosier, which is a company who always has a little bit of tongue in cheek um, 
humor to some of their designs. They're cheeky. Um, they came out with a, a new version of the Alps, and it's minimal. So I thought I'd ask what you thought of it, Captain Minimal. Well, so taking a look at this uh, Moser watch, um, this the face. It, let's just let's just not beat around the bush. Here's my take on this. You're looking at an Apple Watch design with the square, the rounded. Uh, corners, but they've got a tourbillon. Yeah, is that the correct pronunciation? Yeah, yeah. Cool. In the at six o'clock, towards the bottom center of the watch face, and a typical crown. The, the functionality of this is the face is blank, and the only way you can tell the time is using your ears. Yeah. All right, stick with me on this. Pull a slide on the side of the crown. I guess you'd pull the crown well, the, or the, is on the side. I think it's on the side. There's a there's a, a slide on the side and yeah. then there's a crown for uh, that's notched for like five or 15 All minute increments. Right. I can't remember. The hand wound minute repeater will melodically ping out the hours, quarters and minutes for you. All right. So beautiful watch. OMG specs. OMG price. We're looking at around, what is this, a quarter million uh, uh, pounds sterling. So pounds uh, sterling. Two, uh, at the time of this recording, what I found was it's for 274,852 pounds sterling. Give or take. Give or take. So I think this is a beautiful art piece. Yeah. It will stand out. Yeah. However, it's missing the fundamental need of a watch. You flip your wrist and bang, you could tell what time it is. Yeah. And so to have to listen to the, the, the pings and the chimes and stuff like that takes a little while. So I, I, I admire their production value on it, but yeah. I, I think I'm just used to, you know, flicking my wrist. Oh, it's like, you know, 3.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and such. But oh my, what a concept. Yeah. No, I just, the the art the artisanship, like to do a, a grand sonnery is, is impressive enough, but I just, the tongue in cheek of putting basically a sonnery in an Apple Watch case with yeah. a flying tourbillon at six. And just like an Apple Watch, when it's powered down, you see nothing but black. I don't know. I just I found it was just a, a fun tongue in cheek twist on their their Swiss Alps. So here's where I'm gonna probably alienate about ninety percent of the watch fam. <laughs> this can be viewed this could be considered a Mad Libs watch. Mad, Give me yeah, a popular no. type of technology, yeah. Apple Watch. Give me a, a, a high end watch feature, Tourbillon. Give me an outrageous price. Two hundred seventy-five thousand yeah. no, uh, no. sterling, and bang, you got yourself an Alps. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, no that that well, that that's a good way of putting it. It is a Mad Libs watch for a Mad Libs um, uh, Formula One style uh, show. I mean, that that that's it. But the hashtag here is innovation. Yeah, because I don't think anyone's done something like this before. I, I don't, especially think so. in this casing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, boy, howdy. Um, it is it is really something that takes your uh, – you, you cannot look away from this thing. It yeah. is like, what the heck is this? Yeah. In so, a good way. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So that so uh, thanks, One Too Many Watches. Uh, we talked about One Too Many Watches. All right. Next question. This is from Watch Medicine. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, what do you like to do outside when it's drizzling? Yeah. So uh, funny enough, I've talked to Watch, uh, watch Medicine uh, DM style. Uh, I believe he actually came from the PNW, but oh. he's since moved elsewhere. So what's up, Watch Medicine? Yo. And uh, so anyway, what do I like to do when it's drizzling? Well, if you're born and raised in the Pacific Northwest, you don't notice that it's drizzling. You just keep doing what you normally do. <laughs> like, preach. <laughs> but something that I, I, I like to throw out is, especially because I'm a new dad, right? I don't melt. But my, my kiddo can't stand when it's 34 degrees out, right? And we got to run the wiggles out, right? Take my kid to a gym and let them go hog wild so they can crash yes you need your nap time <laughs> <laughs> mommy and daddy need a break go nuts what about you chris uh you know it's along those lines same thing uh simon says when it's driz drizzling out there simon says throw on your favorite hoodie whether it's zip up or full on sw uh, sweatshirt and get on your hiking shoes go for a walk along the many trails of bellingham we got Valley. so many to choose from get a hoodie everyone's got one don't bring an umbrella no one nobody uses wear, them. Yeah, no one nobody uses but here. also if it's drizzling and it's another gloomy day for what eight months out of the year that we have uh, <laughs> in this weather pattern per, I, pursue the quiet to read and think you got three yeah. choices that come to my mind number one village books uh, in Fairhaven. Number two, Henderson books, Henderson's books downtown. Yeah, for used books. Yes, for used books. And also you have the Bellingham Public Library, yeah. which is a great place to be able to get lost in a book and actually to enjoy uh, where your tax dollars are going to. Yeah. So, Wherever you are. Yeah. Enjoy your public library, especially on a drizzly day. Exactly. Next question. So next question is from... Uh, <laughs> that's Amore. That's Hello. Amore. Oh, exactly. yeah, it goes with the uh, show uh, book. Paisana. <laughs> 
Anyway, go ahead. Uh, what are some of the best resources for a young family relocating to the Bellingham area? Great question. And it's so tough when you move to a new city and you don't know a lot of people. How do you get, uh, you know, how do you get your bearings other than getting lost and spending a sp- spending a tank of gas driving around to try to get your internal compass going on? There's a publication that occurs every Wednesday. It comes out every Wednesday. It's called Cascadia Weekly. Yeah. Great independent uh, newspaper and independent uh, periodical. Publication. Publication. Thank you. But what what I love about the Wednesday afternoon is they are re- very reliable in their delivery, and they always give a, um, a list of what's going on with arts, with music, uh, what you know, live music's playing, uh, what book readings may be available, and just a calendar of what's happening in Bellingham and Whatcom County for the upcoming weekend. So mm-hmm. you get it on Wednesday, you got your next uh, upcoming three-day weekend coming up. Plus you get a, a great, insightful articles on news and some pretty thought-provoking editorials. Yeah. Uh, it, it's got, they, got the, they got the beat of Bellingham locked in, and that's really cool. Second thing I would probably mention, if you're – a new family coming in Bellingham around the months of April to December, Saturday morning, late morning, head down to Railroad Avenue, yeah. in downtown Bellingham, Bellingham Farmer's Market. So many people, so many vendors, you get a pulse for what's going on and just and everyone's in a good mood. Yeah. Great place to uh, frequent. And also I heard a rumor uh, in one of the headlines that the Fairhaven Farmer's Market, uh, which normally would be Wednesdays during the summer, I yeah. believe, may may be moving to the Barkley Village Green. Well, the Barkley Village uh, Barkley Village Green had it, has its own farmer's market. Right. So you, you've got a whole lot of, of markets uh, around to get involved with the community, yeah. meet some fine folks, get some fresh local goods and, and, and uh, items and such like that. And then little by little, you might find yourself seeing the same people over and over again because you all have a shared experience going yeah. to the same place. Totally. What about you, AJ? Where's a, a, what would you suggest for a young family moving to Bellingham? So in the same vein as you all start with farmer's markets, also in the summer, there is a, I think it's a Whatcom food and farm tour, which is great. You it, Basically, there's a map. You can go out and see the farms. They said a young family, so I assume they have kiddos. What kiddo doesn't like animals? There you go. And you can visit like the Twin Books Dairy and see all the Jersey cows with all the pretty eyelashes. And you can sample a lot of what Whatcom County, not just Bellingham, but just Whatcom County in general. So kind of getting outside of just our city. Also, beyond that, I would also encourage you to uh, read a pu- in Publication Land, a publication that featured us just recently, which yes. is Bellingham Live. It's Absolutely. a monthly magazine that really kind of catches the, the vibe and ambiance of our city of subdued excitement. And then also for things for kiddos, two places. One place I mentioned before, Perch and Play, which... Uh, on State Street. On State Street, which supports Skookum Kids. Yes. And then also North Coast Gymnastics, if you have a really uh, bouncy uh, bundle of joy. They have a lot of... Um, um, early mornings that you can bring your wee one before the big kids come in and start. And Flying and all over yeah. the place. Yeah. yeah. So North Coast Gym is a really cool place. But also I'd encourage you, like, wherever you relocate, whatever your neighborhood name is, like, we have lots of different districts in, in Bellingham, State Street District or Fountain District, Fountain District Roosevelt, or Roosevelt, Roosevelt. Ours, uh, Barkley Village, yes. um, Tweet 20. Pretty much all of these communities have a Facebook group, and usually they're closed. There's usually a moderator you have to write into, and they usually ask, like, where's your address and stuff to make sure that you're legit. But those Facebook groups are, are really, I mean, basically it's a neighborhood watch. You can find out what's going on. Or And if you're one of the eight people in this world, like me, who don't have a Facebook account, there there is a website out there that uh, I've noticed. It's called nextdoor.com. Yeah. And Next Door Neighbor, I think. Next Door Neighbor, yes. Yeah. Uh, but basically you can sign up for an account, and then you can pick off the neighborhood in which you're living in. And my wife has uh, got an account on one that is kind of in our neighborhood area. Uh, and it, it has a little bit of information. You could see who your neighbors are. There might be some goods that people are trying to sell. Or yeah. watch out for a uh, – we've lost our dog. Have you seen uh, Mr. Wiggles? <laughs> Mr. Uh, Wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so here's a good way to be able to get to know the people in your neighborhood. Anyway, uh, if, if this – is you, new uh, young family coming to Bellingham. Welcome. We're yeah. glad you're here. And thanks for listening to the show. That's right. Uh, last question. If you had to be a classic TV show star, who would it be? Now, they said yeah, Magnum yeah. P.I. with the GMT. With the GMT dot, dot, dot. So like uh, Instagram, uh, I, sometimes I love you and I hate you. So this is from Buying on Time. Here's the thing. So originally, when you read the questions, like, oh, if you could be any classic TV show star. So you said. I said Stringfellow Hawk from Airwolf because there is no other cooler 
leading man yeah. in 80s television than Jan Michael Vincent before his train wreck Hollywood career yeah. uh, took a nosedive. But the young Jan Michael Vincent, season one, season two of Airwolf, I had to be him. That was who I was. The, the, the brooding, loner guy that always can blow up those evil whomever they the was. Baddies. The baddies. Yes. No, that was my guy. But anyway, go ahead. So so originally, and so I had to expand it on, on my, my screen. Um, what Buying on Time had originally asked is, if you had to be one classic TV show star, who would it be? Magnum with the GMT mastered or MacGyver. Uh, M- Mac, and oh, then it, Mac. Just, it even cut off on mine. So yeah. I'm assuming MacGyver. Yeah. And I had to look up what MacGyver wore, and I, the best I could tell, it, he wore a vintage Timex, I'm guessing? I would not be surprised with someone utilitarian and resourceful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, um, Magnum P.I., uh, Tom Selleck, yes. uh, famously wore a uh, Rolex GMT Master uh, Pepsi, uh, Pepsi bezel, if I recall. There you go. And to which I, I believe he actually got after the show. He actually kept that watch if I... Because he's tough. I'm freaking Selleck. That's why. Um, <laughs> watch him correct me on that one because I, I can't remember where I saw that. But um, so, w- are you in Team uh, Magnum? Or are you in Team MacGyver? Oh well, everyone who p- has paid attention to me over the years has known uh, that buying on time. Thanks for your question. This is awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm definitely in the MacGyver camp because I'm more utilitarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, it, Timex. If that's the case, I think so. I think that's what he wore. I watch fam. Help, help us out. What yeah. did MacGyver wear? Well, he, when the original running, MacGyver, not the reboot. No. No, oh, no, we don't. We don't even acknowledge yeah. the reboot. Richard no. Dean Anderson. Re- that's right. As he's escaping the baddies. Dun, 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 that's right. Dun, 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 um, <laughs> he probably has. He probably doesn't have that two hundred seventy-five a uh, thousand no, e- no. euro uh, <laughs> Alps on his wrist. He's got a Timex that takes a lick and he keeps, keeps on, on ticking, ticking as he creates bombs out of bubble gum and paper clips. Yeah, yeah. AJ, I'm thinking you're going to be in the Magnum style. I am in Magnum, Because you are the suave debonair. Dude, uh, if I could rock a mustache like Tom Selleck, my life would be complete. You, got, you know what? Give me some trimmers. <laughs> I got your mustache. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my wife would hate you. Yeah. But no, but I, it grows back. Uh, valid, valid. Not fast enough if you ask her. But no, I love that. I love that classic uh, GMT master. I, I mean, the, you want to talk about skookum dollars, like even those vintage ones are, are, are pretty killer. But yeah, no, I just I, I'm, I'm always a fan of a GMT and, and the Rolex GMT uh, movement, I think, is one of the, the best that they've ever made. There so, you go. Well, um, one too many watches. Watch medicine. That's amore. And buying on time. Thank you for chiming in yeah. on, a, on a fairly uh, fun uh, listener question and answer uh, period for the show. AJ? Yep. We need to wrap this show yep. up. It is time to wrap this up. I want you to slide that slide and have those grand sonnery bells ring. Thank you so much for tuning in for the Bellingham Podcast. We appreciate you so much for listening to us, rating us, reviewing us, wherever you like to get your podcast. Remember, if you are in the Bellingham area or you're relocating to the area, that's Amore, uh, you might be listening to us on Camry 102.3 FM. Low power. Community radio here in the heart of the city of subdued excitement. On that note... Stay warm, everybody, and get outside. I'm AJ Barsay. And I'm Chris Bell. Thank you once again for joining us on the Bellingham Podcast. That was fun. I, 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 that social media for the win. Yes, exactly. One of the saving graces, I am a, I'm a fan of the fans. <laughs>